Today I'm talking to Angela Morigi about the Reimaginary Project um, and that's a wonderful website that collects creative methods that you can use in your own sustainability work. Angela, could I ask you to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Angela Morigi. I work at the University of Padova, uh, Department of Land, Environment, Agriculture and Forestry on uh, transformative social innovation and uh, I'm part of the Reimaginary team uh, which is um, composed of uh, a few members. There's uh, Kelly Rose Pearson, Anke de Vries, Siri Pisters, Sara Grenny and Marta Nieto Romero and myself. <laughs> How did the Reimaginary project come about, Angela? So the Reimaginary project uh, has been uh, long in the pipeline. Uh, we've started uh, working on these as part of a bigger um, Marie Curie ITN project, so an innovative training network uh, funded by the uh, European Commission Marie Curie funds. Um, and this bigger project was called SOSPLACE, which stands for Sustainable Place Shaping. So we were all working on uh, place-based issues and many of us were uh, using participatory and uh, action research and creative methods in their work. Um, and uh, basically, uh, some of us decided to uh, start uh, a sub-project within SOSPLACE um, to uh, kind of present uh, uh, something uh, innovative at the Transformations Conference of 2017. So it all started with the idea of presenting a workshop there and working on that workshop together. And uh, through that process, we started designing and adapting uh, a number of methods, uh, drawing from a lot of very different transdisciplinary disciplines, uh, like uh, system thinking, design thinking, experiential learning. Um, and uh, we eventually came up with a number of methods, creative methods and art space methods, um, which then made up uh, the structure uh, of uh, our workshop for Transformations 2017. Uh, another component that was super important in our process of co-creation uh, and also in designing the workshop was Theory U. So we all took uh, a facilitation uh, um, training in Theory U, which was very useful uh, and gave us uh, kind of the guiding uh, the skeleton of our workshop. And when the workshop, we ran the workshop at the Transformation Conference, uh, it was so uh, um, exciting and uh, we were so happy to see how well it was welcomed and how the participants were, uh, you know, s satisfied uh, about uh, their participation, that we decided to continue working on the methods and eventually set up uh, a open access repository where all the methods will be accessible to everyone. Of course, there was also a step in between, which was the publishing of a toolkit. So before the website was created, we actually published this, which is uh, our art space, the methods uh, toolkit for transformative engagement, um, which was, was also totally open access and uh, which is kind of collecting most of the methods that you find now on the website, uh, as well as facilitation tips, uh, workshop uh, uh, ideas and um, uh, case studies. And in your opinion, what's kind of special about creative practice in setting up conditions for transformations? Yeah, so um, the, 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 the thing that inspires us uh, really most, uh, uh, there are several reasons why we think creative methods are powerful, but I think one very important um, aspect that we want to push forward with Reimaginary is the idea of uh, nurturing ecological mindsets. So uh, creative methods are cool and, you know, art can be used in several ways. Uh, participatory methods are very, um, you know, popular these days. Uh, but the thing is that um, um, 
many times, even when they're used uh, in relation to sustainable issues, uh, still there are very um, many methods can be designed with a very anthropocentric um, mindset, and uh, and also without uh, tapping into the potential for regeneration. So regeneration in the sense of really trying to think of uh, different uh, futures, let's say, uh, but also different present circumstances where both nature and uh, people can thrive. So for really the well-being of social ecological systems. And, uh, and so in, with having this in mind, we tried to design and tweak methods um, really trying to nurture this, this ecological mindset. And of course, this also has to do with uh, 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 fostering uh, values like care, empathy, um, and uh, kindness uh, and inclusiveness, uh, amongst others. How do you think having an ecological mindset or perspective changes things? Well, there's there's kind of two steps in, in trying to push for ecological mindsets. First is really becoming aware of our mindsets and our values and their underlying assumptions that are often, um, you know, internalized and not made explicit when we think about sustainability, when we think about planning and uh, uh, visioning future possibilities, etc. Et so first of all, really giving the the space to 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 delve into our mindsets and uh, and uh, it's really important for us and secondly uh, we think that uh, uh, many times uh, we approach issues with an anthropocentric worldview and mindset and um, and so with our method we really want to try and uh, increase uh, empathy for other species but at the same time uh, kind of um, bring these other species into the conversation. So, for instance, one of the methods that was most appreciated by our community is uh, uh, more than human, inviting more than human stakeholders to the table. And of course, it's inspired by the Council of All Beings of Joanna Macy. Uh, and the idea is that uh, we put ourselves into the shoes of other animals and we see things and we try to um, uh, understand issues from the perspective of other beings and by doing so we enlarge our horizons we enlarge our perspectives uh, not only to understand uh, try to understand what uh, an ant or uh, an eagle or a bear would would think of a certain situation um, but also uh, that helps us to become more empathetic with other human beings as well uh, so, uh, in a way, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really it, it's really more than than just uh, including other species. How did the project change your mind about what sustainability transformations are? Yeah, so there's uh, for me personally, and I think for many of us within Reimaginary, uh, this this project has been really crucial in shaping our idea of sustainability science and uh, any way of any sustainability oriented work and uh, also what transformation means. And I think we see transformation from several perspectives with perhaps three in particular. One is the this idea of sparking fresh perspectives and new alternative paradigm and mindsets and uh, that's what I've been already discussing earlier. Uh, and that links to the idea of inner transformation, which uh, has uh, uh, been, uh, you know, growing within the sustainability science community lately about this idea of really starting from within, uh, from our own values, visions, and, uh, to, to, and then moving uh, outwards and uh, including the, the, the researcher's values and his own ways of living and thinking and, and behaving and interacting and relating. Um, secondly, we really see transformations as the opportunity to enhance inclusive and generative spaces where we can all collaborate and co-create and co-produce knowledge together. And, um, 
Thirdly, we also want to support uh, holistic and integrated ways of learning and knowing. So kind of uh, uh, really opening the floor for, you know, different ways of creating knowledge, uh, drawing from indigenous wisdom, from, uh, yeah, experiential learning, uh, from um, the um, somatic embodied ways of knowing and sensing and, uh, but also the emotional side of uh, producing knowledge, which is so important and so many times dismissed. So there's really a lot going on uh, but uh, we found that creative methods and a theory you processes can really help us achieve that. And, um, and so uh, this is how we, we have, um, yeah, this has been very enriching.